Okay, we're going to teach Tinkercad today. First thing we need to do is open up a web browser. I'm going to use Google Chrome. All right. So now in the address bar up top here, I will type T I N K E R C A D dot com. Enter. Loads the website. If you haven't created an account with them, you'll need to sign up. I'm going to sign in to my existing account. Just got to type that in. Username, which is an email usually, and the password. Enter to sign in or click that button and then it will load your account page. If you get a message like this, you can just hit no thanks, nothing to worry about. Now you're in your account page. If you have existing accounts, you can put your mouse over one of the previews and then click tinker this to work on that some more. I'm gonna click create new design to open up a brand new design. Now, uh, the main part of the interface is on the right. We have six shortcuts for different sections of this side. And we also have some other buttons as well. I'll go through from top to bottom. So first we have favorites. We can add shapes that we use regularly in our 3D designs to this favorites menu to access them easily. We've got an import menu. If you want to modify someone else's design, you can uh, open up a file from your desktop and then have that be inserted into your design. After you choose the file and then hit the import button. To collapse any one of these menus, you just click it again. To open it up, we click it once. We have shape generators as well. These are fancy widgets that allow us to design custom shapes like test, text, and uh, even more things as well. There are ones developed by Tinkercad and then also by members of the community going to close out of both of those. Helpers is the first one that has a shortcut. And these are advanced tools we'll teach later. Tinker Play has pre-made tools for designing robots. Models made with these tools tend not to print very well on the library 3D printers. The geometric section is a very important one. We use boxes and cylinders and pyramids and roofs very regularly in our designs that we do here at the library. So I'm going to hit this star button and then uh, if we go up to our favorites now we see that that box is in our favorites menu. To insert a shape what we do is single click it and then release and then drag our mouse into the uh, left side of Tinkercad here. As it's labeled in the lower left corner, this is called the work plane. It's your 3D design area for inserting multiple shapes and rotating around and uh, manipulating your design. Now, once we have a shape in here, we can also move it. So you do that by single left clicking and dragging around. As you do that, you'll see on the screen indicators of how far you've moved it. If you have to do some sort of precise movement, that can be uh, very helpful. It's also helpful to keep your model as close as possible to the middle of the work area. We'll show you why in uh, just a second. If you're having uh, trouble viewing your shape, 
you can rotate your view. In the upper left side, we have controls for changing the view. Up and down arrows, rotate around the center in those directions. Left and right, go in those directions. If you get confused and want to go back to the default view, this house button in the middle takes us back to the default view. If you have multiple shapes and want to quickly zoom in on uh, one of them, I'll move that box around there. You can click the shape, then click this square button between the other two halves of the view controls to automatically be zoomed in on that individual shape. I'm going to hit the home button to get back to the default view and then move the box into the middle. We also have zoom controls, the plus button to go in and the minus button to go out. We can also use the scroll wheel on our mice to go in and out. Now we can also use, instead of the arrows, our mouse to rotate around the center as well. If you right click and hold and drag, you can rotate around in any sort of which way around the center of your view. We find that rather than a straight on view, like the view that uh, is the default, some sort of view to an angle, either left or right or from the back, either side. Some sort of angle allows you to see more of the dimensions of your model rather than just being straight on. Now another thing, if uh, you're rotating around and you find that you just need to shimmy over a little bit to the uh, right or left. If you hold the shift key on your keyboard and then right click and drag, you can shimmy over to the left or to the right or up or down without rotating. You rotate around and sometimes that's not how you want to move. Sometimes you want to just move over a little bit without rotating. So that's how you do that. Shift, right, click, and drag. Okay, I'm going to zoom out here and delete a couple of my shapes. To delete a shape, you click on it and then click the delete key on your keyboard. Now, we haven't changed the shape of anything yet. We have uh, multiple ways to do that. To change the width of a shape only, you can use the black handles. You left click them, hold and drag, and you see indications of how big your shape is becoming. I'll make it 40 millimeters. And then to do uh, the other side, you can use either of the black handles in the middle of the shape. I'm going to make that 30 right now, 30 millimeters. Okay. Now to resize both length and width at the same time, you can use any of the four white corners in the boxes in the corner, excuse me. So I'll make this 40 by 40. Now we can also resize the height of our shape as well. As soon as you click on the shape, you'll see that you have a handle at the top of it that you can single left click and drag up. I'm going to also make that 40 millimeters. Okay, so there we go. Now if you have made a shape and you're, you've forgotten its dimensions, as soon as you've clicked on the shape, you can just hover over any of these little resize handles to see the dimensions. So it's saying 40 millimeters wide and 40 millimeters deep. And I can do the same thing 
on the upper resize handle, so it tells us it's 40 millimeters tall. Okay. We may also need to rotate our shapes. From the default view here, it's just a straight cube. But if I rotate over, I can see resize handles for all three axes. I can rotate my x-axis, my y-axis, and my z-axis. If I want to do uh, 22.5 degree rotations, I click and hold on that uh, curved arrow indicator and stay in the middle of the circle that appears and then drag around. If I move on the outside of that circle, I can do one millimeter degree rotations. And if I want to, of course, not rotate, I can go back to zero. But I'm going to fix this to be where we were to start. And you see those one millimeter and uh, 22.5 millimeter rotations work the same in all three orientations. But I'm going to set this back to zero millimeters. Okay, now I've got this box and I'm actually going to make a house with this as uh, the example for the rest of this video. So I'm going to use a roof and put it just to the side here and then change it to 40 by 40 millimeters, but leave the height alone. So 40, there we go, by 40 millimeters. Now, 3D design programs can be kind of tricky. You have to be very precise with your mouse movements. And it also helps to rotate your view a lot so you can see exactly what you're doing. Now this black up arrow allows me, if I single left click and hold it, to raise my shapes up where they're starting from, their bottom point. So I'm going to raise this up to 40 millimeters and release. And we can see that we did this correctly by rotating around, but also by the shadow that appears. There's a virtual light source somewhere, if you imagine, above this 3D space, somewhere directly above it, and our shadows appear directly below our shapes. Now I'm going to move this roof onto the house, the top of it there. Just uh, left click and drag, and there we go. I got it exactly onto the top of the house. Now if I want to zoom in, again, I've got this square button here. And it's important to check to make sure you have parts of your model where you want them. So you want to rotate around and check it. Okay. Now up here in the upper right corner we have this tool called the inspector which appears as soon as I've clicked on a shape. You notice between the roof and the main portion of this house that they're different colors. We can change the colors of parts of our model. Using the inspector, you click on the color section, and then you have a range of colors to pick. So I'm going to change the roof's color to be red. So there we go. House is starting to look uniform. Okay. Now another thing you uh, probably want in a house is a door. So uh, we're going to use the holes section of the right side menu to make a door. I'm going to shimmy over using a shift right click and drag so I can see this hole a little bit better. Now that's too big for a door. so. We can resize however we want. I'll make it 10 millimeters by 15 millimeters tall and 15 millimeters deep. Uh, there we go. And then drag it into the middle of the house here. Okay. 
Now we see that hole, but if I move it away, it had to, it didn't remove anything from the uh, cube section of the house. To kind of apply this hole, what I have to do is from any blank area, left click and hold and drag over any portion of the hole and the cube portion of the house and release to select both of those parts. Now above the inspector, I click the group button and watch what happens. So it thinks for a second and then it removes that portion from the house. So that can be a very useful tool if there's little bits of a model that you need to remove to create the shape that you want. We can also group parts without using holes. I've got the roof part, which is separate. And if you ever screw up, you know, I moved it aside of the house. I've got an undo button. So I can click undo, and then it's going to move it back onto the house for me. It undoes the last thing I did. And then, of course, if I change my mind, I want it back, redo. But I don't, so undo. There we go. If I want to kind of fix this roof in place, I can select them both and group will do that for me. Ungroup, of course, will undo any grouping that you do. So there we go. We see now that the line between the triangle portion of the roof and the cube portion of the house disappeared. Sometimes you'll see those lines, but the shape will still be grouped. Those are just errors. All right, we're getting through most of the main features of Tinkercad. Now, in that helpers menu, I'm going to show you the work plane tool now. The work plane, as we can see by the label here, is the base of our 3D design. It's the space we design on, the work plane. Now the default one, of course, is just kind of like a ground. It's the bottom. But once we have designed a shape, we can use any of the surfaces, the top or the side or the front, or even inside the door or below it, as a new work plane. So what I do to do this is click on work plane, then drag my mouse in, and you see I have this funny tool that's kind of a darker blue with an up arrow on it. If I move that onto my shape, you see what happens here. It adjusts to look like the sides, the edges of my 3D model. So I'm going to use the edge over here. And then to apply this, you single left click. And then you see what happens here. I'm going to zoom out and rotate around to give you a perspective of that. So now this new orange work plane that we have customized and moved is flush directly even with that edge of the house. And what I'm going to do now, go back up to the geometric tools. Any shape that I insert now is going to be even with that plane. So I'm going to put that triangle uh, pyramid right here, but actually delete it. And I'm going to use this to make a garage in our house. I'm going to take the box and zoom in here and try to place it directly even here with that edge of the house. Now you see the controls, this up arrow is facing the opposite direction than we saw it before. And that's because of the work plane. The work plane is oriented in a different direction than the default work plane. So if we're done using that work plane we inserted, we can click on the work plane tool again and click just anywhere in the default bottom to put the work plane back. And then we're back to normal. 
Okay, now I'm going to show you one more thing in this video, and that is a combination of ungrouping and doing finer movements in Tinkercad. So first let's do ungrouping, just to show you that. So we can click on uh, anywhere in the right portion of the house, and then click ungroup. Now you see that it split the bottom portion, which we had grouped earlier, from the top of the roof. So now if we look at this roof, you know, it doesn't have any overhang above the side of the house. It's not going to uh, protect the uh, walls of the house very well. So I want to extend it just a little tiny bit around each of the four edges. But if I do uh, a movement right now, you see it increases it from 40 to 41 immediately. What if I want to do uh, 40.5 millimeters? We can do that all the way in the lower corner of Tinkercad. We have Snap Grid. And you see it's set to 1.0. If I click on it, I have options for uh, less resolution, 2.0 and 5.0 but I want to switch it to 0.5. So I can now take the roof portion and increase it by 0.5 millimeters. I'm going to do that around all four sides. So there we go. I've got that little edge just to help protect the house a little bit from the elements. And those are some basics of Tinkercad. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thanks.